Hello and welcome to the Google Podcast with myself, Rob Watson. And in this episode, I'm going to go again doing my usual little solo ones where I'm dropping them in in between an interview and then doing my own thing, which kind of feels like, you know, it feels good to me. It feels good to me. It enables me to share some of the things that I'm interested in, but also as well as doing the interviews, people, I'm giving other people the space and the platform to share their ideas and share their experiences and hopefully inspire you guys. And then also I talk about some of the things that I'm interested in and what I think can help us all in some way to become better versions of ourselves, to find ways within us to become to do more good, to do more good in our lives, and do more good of us. So in this episode, I want to talk about something which I've really like reflected on and really thought about for the past few years and stuff. And it's basically all around failure and um, how it's considered to be something wrong for us and how failure is a bad thing and how there's also a, a lot of shame around failure. And I really want to sort of debunk that and I want to embrace failure and I want to talk in this episode about certain things that have happened to me in my life and my experiences that have really helped me, but then also other people and other people's stories and and, and how they have overcome the idea of failure. And I'm using failure here very much in inverted commas because I don't, first and personally, I don't believe that um, failure is a bad thing. I think as long as that we show up and we do our best, failure is part of the process. That is how we learn. That is how we grow. Whether it be, you know, think about it as a kid, as a child, when you're going to start to learn to walk, how many times you don't just start to have a little go and think, oh, it doesn't matter. You keep on trying. You keep on doing it until you're learning it better. And then I also think about learning to ride a bike is a really great lesson early on for us and it's something really quite really powerful when we think about it when you first get on a bike you know you're going to struggle and you're going to have your you're going to have your extra wheels on aren't you going to have your extra wheels on to support you so you can't fall off and then the moment they come off it's like a surrendering process but also realizing you're on your own a little bit you got to find the way and how often would you fall off most of us are going to fall off the first couple of times aren't we or more or five or ten times but we keep getting back on the bike we keep getting back on. And that isn't considered like a failure each time you fall. It's considered a lesson. It's part of the process of growing and learning and becoming better. Now, I feel that in society, that somewhere, somewhere along the lines, we've had a different perspective on it. And I think it prevents a lot of us from then going out and doing stuff and following our dreams or starting new things because that feel of fear of failure. Now, I believe that part of this is seeded in to us as we're growing up, as we're going through school. Now, you know, a few of you may have, there's a bit of a pattern here that I talk about the school system a lot because it's very much, you know, I'm talking about my own experiences, but also hearing from other people that they're talking about it. And I believe when you go to school straight from the off, in a way, you're there to prove yourself against someone else. If you get something wrong, it's a bad thing. When I believe that when we get things wrong or or we don't do so well at stuff, you know, we need to be encouraged as best we can and told and really told that this is part of the process for us because otherwise we're going to become petrified of failure in our lives and we won't do plenty of things because we'll just have that in us. And I think what it really comes down to is that we show up and we do our best. That's it. At the end of the day, no matter what we do in our lives, as long as that we do our best, that's all that we can ask for. You know, there's always going to be someone out there who's better at you, who's smarter, who's stronger, who's faster. Yet it's not necessarily about us being the best. It's about us being our best. And if we can start to realize that we're all individual, that we've, and some of us learn faster than others, I think all that should be taken into consideration as you're growing up. You know, and, and the way we learn, the way we're taught, and, and I, I just think it's so personal, I think it's so important that we celebrate failure and we recognize that it's part of the process of growing and learning and becoming better at something. And if we can instill that in such an early age, and continue that, you know, like this, you know, like riding a bike or learning to walk, them kind of things that you learn and how do you, because you persevere. So I do think if we can, if we can give our children uh, a, a more of a safer place to experiment and to learn and to create, to get things wrong, you know, it's so important that we get things wrong. Some of the most successful people 
have failed over and over and over in their lives. This is one of the best stories for me. I think everyone knows Colonel Sanders. So Colonel Sanders is the founder of KFC. You know, and he didn't start his dream until he was 65 years of age. You know, he was getting his social security check, I think, at that time, and it wasn't a lot of money, and he was mad, you know, and instead of complaining about it, he, he wanted to do something about it instead. So he had this recipe, this, this fried chicken recipe, and he thought the owners of restaurants would totally love it and that they would um, totally embrace what it was. But he kept on going around to restaurants and knocking on doors and he'd be sleeping in his car and, and going all these different places. And he kept on getting set. He kept on getting told no. People would just laugh at him, you know, thinking he's a 65 year old guy. What's he got to offer? Now he keep on, keep on and keep on and keep on. Now he, before he heard the right answer or the answer that he wanted was a yes to someone's respond. He got told no 1,009 times. Now that is like phenomenal if you think about it. How many of us would even go past 10 or 15 or 20 times? This guy did not quit on his dream. You know, and even at that age, imagine how many people laughed at him, how many didn't. Even probably people close to him, friends, family probably thought, hey, what's he going to do here? He can't do this. But he found a way and look what he did with it, you know. I, I don't necessarily eat KFC, but I just think it's a great example of someone who didn't give up on the daydream, you know, on what they wanted to do. And he got turned down a thousand and nine times before he heard the right answer. And you got Walt Disney as well. This is the man who basically created fun and happy in, in terms of in America and stuff and how that sort of spread out. And, you know, his first animation company, it went bankrupt. He was fired by a news editor because he supposedly lacked imagination. You know, imagination, one of the guys with who's created some of the amazing, most amazing stories and, and stuff like that. Now, he was turned down 302 times before he actually got financing for to create Disney World. Now, again, how many of us would would go that far and how long would they pursue them things, you know? And that's why I think it's really important if we if we believe in something that, that we're really passionate about and we really excites us, then I think it's so important that we just keep going on it. Keep going on it. Don't quit. You know, if you believe in it and you believe in yourself, then that's amazing. Some other examples of people as well, you know, I've got Richard Branson, you know, billionaire now, owner of Virgin. Some of his first companies failed, you know, and some of his companies along the way don't do that great, you know. But he kept on going. This is a guy who... He dropped out of school early on, yet he found a way. And I think in a way, this is a lot of, some of the patterns as well, some of these very successful people that we see out in the world are people that didn't really do well in the school system because it didn't suit them. That structure, that the way things are quite rigid and it was all set out and tests and, and the way it all is. You know, these, these renegades in a world, these people who are really out there didn't fit into that box and I think it's proof that if anyone ever tells you that you're not good at something whether that be a teacher or whatever that's really important like I've got a it's funny you know this just came to mind now so I'm going to share it. I remember being in school I think I was about eight or nine I had this teacher Mr Lomax and he was going around the class asking people what what they wanted to be and I don't know whether he was just in he wasn't having a good day or whatever and it came around to me and I said, I want to be a pilot. I think I even said, I want to be a fighter pilot. This is just what come, came to me. And he just said, you'll never be able to do that. Like, imagine hearing that as an eight or nine year old. You can't do that. I'm like, how, how can you tell anyone at nine that they can't do something? If anyone's listening to this, you've got kids. I think it's so important that we encourage them and we believe in them. Don't give them this false sense and just make them think that they're the most special person in the world. Not like that. But to let them know that they are special and that everyone is special and everyone's got their own unique gift and their own unique thing that they want to do in this life. And that should be encouraged, you know, and that should be nurtured and we should give a place for that. And part of that process, it's very much about failing and about getting things wrong and what i've found now is i've got a bit older and like this is a thing for me like i'm i'm sharing this now because it's still a, it's still a challenge for me i'm starting new things here and there like this podcast and i'm not very good at it at the moment i'm just sort of you know sharing my thoughts and and i'm just doing it because it's something that excites me and who knows where it's going to go so you know i think it's, you know these things just come up, up for me and i 
have challenges as well myself when I start something. I remember a few years ago, I went to a, a still life drawing class and I got really frustrated. I hadn't been done any drawing for years, really. I'd been on my computer for a while. And the, the class had about five or six other artists in there or drawers and they were so good. And I felt, I felt really, I got really worked up actually doing it. I was doing some, one of them turned out and then all right, and another didn't and stuff like that. And you know, I didn't go back. I, I kind of like in a way I quit because I was comparing myself to these other people when these people have been showing up week in, week out and doing this and for me I just rocked up thinking oh I'm going to be good at this because I used to be able to do, I was good at this you know 15 20 years ago so it takes time to to develop your craft and to keep going and to keep learning and in that place I didn't do that now something recently for me I have picked up a pencil again and I have started drawing more for the fun and more for the pleasure of it I think when I was in there I was I was in this mindset of being it was quite I felt quite it wasn't a competitive space but I felt competitive within myself that I had to be good at this and all this sort of stuff. So yeah, this is all part of this thing where I think we're scared of failure because we suddenly expect ourselves to be good at something, you know, but like I talked about like Walt Disney and Colonel Sanders, now he got like the amount of times he got turned around, but here's the thing, like he got heard the word no a thousand and nine times. Yeah, each time he would have heard the word no, he would have learned something, he would have grown from that. And there's plenty of other examples of other people as well. I may have mentioned him in a couple of the podcasts and some of the times I talk, you know, you've got like Tim Ferriss, who's the author behind the four hour work week. You know, it's, it's actually changed how many people sort of you work and life. He certainly has for me. He was rejected by 26 publishers before one gave him a chance. That's the thing, just that perseverance and just keep going and keep believing in yourself and just thinking, well, you know, this could get through, this could get through, but this is where I think the lessons are along the way. The reason we'll keep hearing the word no, because in a way that's that resistance in us. We're getting pushed to actually, can we make the thing that we're working on a bit better? Imagine if we just went to someone and the first time or the second time, like, oh yeah, of course, you can do that. We'll give you the money for it. We're going to publish it. Would have you learned lessons that we need to do in our lives in, in that process? And I believe that is the process, the process of learning it's getting things wrong, it's growing, is making it better each time. So Tim Ferriss, he would have got turned down 26 times, but I can guarantee along the way, he would have been making refinements to the book, he would have been making improvements to it, he would have been getting tips of advice along the way to turn it into the number one bestseller on the New York Times list. So that's the thing, you know, good things take time. It's not going to be an overnight success. And I think we live in a world now where it's instant gratification or we're expecting success very early on in our lives or because you know you hear about someone who's an instagram sensation with millions of followers or some tech startup when he was 22 and he's now worth a billion or all these kind of things can i believe be unhealthy extremely unhealthy for people who are just looking to start something new, to, to go on the path, to, to find that thing that they're passionate about and to turn it into something and not realizing that these things take time. Like Colonel Sanders, he was 65 before he had the idea that he wanted to develop this chicken recipe. So it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter when you start or when you end or whatever it is, but there is gonna be a process for all of us. It's like, for instance, if you want to sit down and write a book I believe it could be at, now I'm not a particularly great writer I've got someone I've got a lot better at I think over time but I was rubbish at it now the thought of me sitting down and writing a book would be really challenging something I would love to do one day I'm gonna put my hand up and say yeah I would love to do that so anyway and then just someone else you know now who would have thought these would have ever got turned out but the Beatles they were rejected by many record labels you know in a famous rejection a label once said guitar groups are on the way out uh, the Beatles have no future in show business. You know, imagine that being told someone, some people now, someone told them that they weren't good enough, that guitar groups were on the way out and there was no, the Beatles had no future in show business. You know, it wasn't long before after that they were signed for EMI and then, you know, come on, Beatlemania just overtook the entire world. So, and I believe the same with Oprah. Oprah got turned down and stuff, or she went for a job interview and someone turned her down. Imagine being that person who turned down Oprah Winfrey or rejected the Beatles. They're going to feel pretty silly later on, aren't they? However, that's the lesson for us. And also, I think if someone does 
it doesn't encourage you or does put you down yeah, i think it's so important for us can we see about not taking it personal now that is such a challenging thing to do because they're obviously saying something to us and sometimes things cut run deep don't they they cut deep and they can affect us for years and years and years that one thing that someone said to you when you were five or six or seven or whatever in your teenage years it can really stay with you i know i've still got a lot of things that have been said to me and i would be very sensitive as a kid and still am now and you know can affect me in a way i think over time we develop more resilience in us that inner resilience and realizing that if someone says something to you that's on them that's got in a way it's nothing to do with you you know i think you got michael jordan as well he's like being famous for being like one of the most successful uh, basketball players in the world you know and he was famously cut from his high school basketball team you know he ended up turning into like say the greatest basketball player ever but he never let failure deter him and this is a quote that came from he said you know he said i missed more than nine thousand shots in my career i've lost over 300 games and on 26 occasions i've been entrusted to take the winning shot and he'd missed each one of them and he said i've failed over and over and over again in my life and that is why i succeed so that last line I think is really important saying I've failed over and over and over again in my life. That is why I succeed. Now, these people, these may be, appear to be like these superstar people out there. And do you know what it is? It's just because they've persevered and they've kept on going. They'll keep on showing up. They'll keep on doing them things. So, so yeah, that's just some of the people that I wanted to talk about that are potentially, you know, are potentially failures or they've failed so many times but the failure is why they've succeeded something else i just want to share this thing about keep showing up and believing in yourself now i've got this is something that stayed with me it's been a really great anchor for me but when i was younger when i was about 11 or 12 i had a friend down the road michael whelan his name was and we would play tennis together now i wasn't very good at tennis but he was okay and we would go round, but the back of our house was very fortunate, just behind we had a big playing field and we had tennis courts and stuff like that. And I would go round and play tennis with him and he would absolutely wipe the floor with me. To start off with, it would be like six love, six love, you know, two sets completely. I wouldn't, wouldn't even win a game. And I'd go home and I'd be like, eh, I don't feel that great with this, you know, I've just been absolutely destroyed on the tennis court. Mum and dad be like, oh, how do you get on, son? I'd be like, oh, yeah, I got beat, I got really beat. But their response from me was like, you know, they gave me encouragement. They're like, oh, it's okay, you know, you'll, you'll do better next time. And they never put pressure on me. So it's like, oh, saying, you know, or, or talk me down or saying, why don't you try something else instead? They were just encouraging, you know, and they gave me support. They weren't pushy, but they just gave me encouragement and support about, you know, go back out there and show. So I keep going, I keep playing against them. I keep getting beat over and over but each time I keep on getting beat I would get better and I'd start to win a few games and before you know it I was losing 6-4 6-4 rather than 6-0 6-0 and ever so slowly bit by bit I got up to his level and after about getting beat 20 times maybe more I finally won and that felt really great for me to be able to show me that I can get better it's in my control, it's in my thing. If I just keep on going, you know, like I said, I lost that many times, but I keep on showing up and I keep on getting the encouragement from my parents to say, no, just go back out there, you'll do good, you know? Um, and it was, it felt really good. And for me to get that lesson for me when about 11 or 12 has really helped me in my life and in my career of just pursuing things and to not give up if it's something that I really enjoy. But that's just one little story that came to mind that I wanted to to share for me. And it's like, you know, riding your bike, isn't it? You know, you just keep getting back on until you get better. And another thing I just want to share, I think also, I think it's important that we, we ask for help along the way. Now, I'm sharing this because that's something that I've found challenging over the years is to ask for help. I think the way we grow up and the way things are portrayed to us, it becomes this very, uh, towards this individualism and... I think this, you know, the system pushes us towards to drive towards this, like you know, individualism, and that we have to do everything on our own. And look at these people, and you see stories on the news or in magazines about these super women or super men who have got all these, 
all these kids and all these jobs and all these hours they work and stuff like that it's like as if it's all about them and I think it's very important that we we can let go of that and we can realize that it's important that we can ask for help along the way and not to be afraid from it. It's not to be something ashamed of. In fact, that's how we can grow. You know, asking someone for help because the way we work now, like everything that we've got in our lives or whatever who it is, it's not just been about us. So many people have played a role in us doing the things that we're doing and very much in a working environment or if you want to set up a business you're going to need loads of support you're going to need the right people around you you need the right people to help you you're going to need to help them so i think it's important that we're able to feel like we can reach out and ask for help and also be brave enough to reach out and ask for help from some people that we look up to some people that you might think you know they're out of my league or they're way further ahead you'll be surprised how how people like to help other people as they're on the way up you know to mentor them to give them encouragement i think it's really important that we're able to do that and and also what's important i think as well is to be aware of and i i talked about it in my last other podcast i did on my own about tony robbins and his events and the unleash the power of in he talks about how the five people we spend the most time of influence the most and shape us into be like them in a way we're like with the sum of all their parts in some ways so i think that's in, that's something to us be recognized you know look who we're spending the most time with look who we're getting our sources of information from can we switch that up a little bit way so we feel like we can get the right support and encouragement in that group you know so we can feel like we can throw some ideas around and things like that And then something else I'm interested in sharing is like this idea of if the odds are stacked against you. And I actually think we can create our own odds and we can turn them in our favor no matter what they are. Like I remember when I was at uni and we went down to London on a trip for the weekend and these big industry leaders were giving these talks and were right on the stage and they were telling us all. And they were basically said to us all that 90% of us won't get a job. And I remember those people around there, they were felt really disheartened hearing that, that 90% of people weren't getting a job. And I think we've got to be really careful with what we take on and what we hear. And if we really let it go into us, because that can really affect and shape us because you could think, well, if 90% of people in my instant aren't gonna, gonna get a job, then what's the point in trying? Or what's the point in going for it? Because that 10%, but you know what? I just remember hearing it and I kind of just at that time just let it washed off me. Now it wasn't the time when I was a kid and I got told I couldn't be a pilot. That didn't wash off me, that hurt. But at this instance, because I maybe built up some more resilience and I believed in myself more and I had supportive parents who believed in me and would encourage me, that I didn't believe him when he said that 90% or I certainly didn't let it affect me. And this is to the point where I remember when I graduated, I actually got offered two jobs. So that 90%, and the thing is, here's the thing is like, I was not the most talented pe- person on my course. I wasn't considered in, in the top 10%. Yet I worked at it, I believed in myself, I would put the effort in, and I got offered two jobs and I took one, and then, and then two years later I set up my first company. Again, I believed in myself. I had this vision for me, and I think it's very important as well that we can visualize what we imagine that we'd love to see it happen in our lives and through that imagination that's when you can get excited you can start to picture things and you can start to really visualize yourself that future version of you manifesting and growing that's the thing i think it's important that we can create our own odds in lives no matter what it is whether it's 90 percent against you or whatever you're going to get a one percent chance of doing it you can do it if it's something that you truly feel inside that it's something you're passionate about, you know, and you want to do it, we should just go for it, you know, and we can learn and make it up as we go along. I think, you know, touches back into something I said before, this idea of that we think we're going to be good at something as soon as we set out. Some things can take years and years. You hear that thing, well, I've heard it a few times about to become an absolute master at something, it can take 10,000 hours, whether that be playing the the violin or it could be as a footballer or whatever that is then it takes time and it takes effort and that's the thing it's a journey you know life is a journey 
I think sometimes we think there's a destination that we need to get to and then once I get to that destination or once I've set up this business or once I've gotten this healthy state or whatever the them things are, we can feel like, oh, that's when success will be. But actually, the journey is the destination in life and if we can enjoy the process because the process is the point to things, that's when we learn. So it's not about what's going to happen tomorrow or in a few weeks or what we're building to. It's what we're doing right now, today, in terms of building the things and creating the things that we want to do in our lives. Talking about taking time, like I've got another project that I've been working on. It's a children's project. It's an animal themed duvet set. Some people who are connected to me will have seen some of the images that I've shared. Like here's the thing, like I first had this idea six or seven years ago. And I know back then I wanted that to sort of like happen really fast. I was like, okay, this is gonna be done in six months. I'm gonna be selling it, I'm gonna be launching it. God, it's gone completely, you know, it's been really stretched out. And I'm aware that if I would have done it so fast, then it probably wouldn't even exist now. It would have failed or whatever, it would have dropped off. And, and this is a thing where it's important that we don't rush things. I think there's a divine time into certain things in your life that they will happen and manifest at a certain time for you without us pushing them. And for me, I've had times when I felt like quitting with the bed buds because like the first illustrator that we were working with, it didn't like work out for, for, you know, a reason or another. I went round and round trying to find a supplier because for us, it's very important that we work with an ethical supplier, an organic supplier, someone who is, you know, they're looking after their employees. I don't want to be involved in any of these, you know, I, I want every part of the process as best I can to be authentic and to have meaning and value so it's been a process for me and I, you know we got told no plenty of times from suppliers quite a few in Portugal and, and other places who were just saying to us no you, you know you can't do that you, you know you're gonna have to get too many printed or they're too expensive or we're not taking on any new people yet we persevered and we found the supplier and this year we're looking to launch that project so there's been plenty of roadblocks along the way yeah, for each of them, what it's enabled me, and this is why I think I can really resonate with, say, like the Tim Ferriss who've gotten turned down 24 times in his book, is that each time I've hit like a bit of a roadblock with it, I've reassessed it and I've improved it. So I found this amazing new illustrator who's really like got my vision and really pushed it, and he's been totally open to my feedback, and he's been really willing to keep going at it and to get it to the point that it's at now. And if I would have just sort of, if the one went with the first illustrator and I was kind of pushing it to happen five, six years ago, then it wouldn't have been the project that it's turned out to be for me. And who knows where it's going to go? I'm not even sure how big it's going to be, how small it's going to be. I'm just going with it. And there's the thing as well. This is when I think it's important when it's not to give up. There's been times when I've felt like quitting and it's just been like, Ugh. but at that moment, whether that was just a time of me surrendering, just at that moment, another door opened for me. Another way I would get this feeling or get excited about it again and it would just open up for me. So that's probably a really good lesson for us all to realise if something is maybe, if it's not going in the right direction for us and we kind of keep on hitting up against doors and they won't open. I feel like I've hit up against quite a few doors with this one, but just at the right time, it's either opened or another one's appeared for me. So there's no shame, I think, in actually changing your mind and going in a different direction or to choosing a different idea, which I've thought many a times, but for this one, I'm pursuing it, you know? I'm gonna keep on going. And I could consider that, you know, it's taking me this long. People might say, you know, why haven't you got it out there yet? Or these things, and that's fine. That this is my process for it, and I will just keep learning and I'll keep going for it. And I believe I'll have a nice product in the end to share with people. So I think I've just got some final words now just to touch on this. Um, again, it's been a little bit, I feel like I've got the things across that I wanted to do, but it's maybe been a little bit all over the shop um, because, yeah, that's the way it is. So, my bit of a roundup on things, you know, I think the most important thing is for us to do our best. It's not about being the best, it's about just doing our best at something and recognizing that failure is part of the journey, it's part of the process for us, that we will learn along the way and we will build strength and, and resilience by keep on going, keep on going. Them examples that I've given you along the way earlier on are people 
that have showed that they can overcome adversity. And I think the more of us do that, the more we're gonna see that everyone in the world and we can do, we can we can achieve some of the things that we really wanna do. We can create a better world, we can do more good. And that's, you know, it comes back to that, doesn't it? You know, us doing more good. The more resilience we have, the more empowered we are. I think that's a really key thing for me is to get across and it always is in these podcasts. I wanna empower people. I wanna empower myself by doing this to keep going, keep believing in ourselves. And you know, most important thing is to enjoy the things we do. And no matter how many times that someone might tell us we can't do something, just be like, you know what? I'm gonna, and it's not about proving them wrong. I don't think if someone has, has told us, because we've got to be very careful, I think, if we think I'm gonna just set out to prove them wrong. I don't think we should do that because it's an, in a way that's, I think, an, it's a negative mindset. I personally prefer it's best to, why don't we prove ourselves right? If we can focus on that, I'm gonna prove myself right on this one, you know? I'm gonna keep on going. So. Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that for today and I hope you've enjoyed this one and I'd love to hear from you guys about your own experiences of maybe times in your life when you've been turned down or whatever but you've persevered or you've not been so good at something but you've kept on going and you've developed that resilience. So I, as always, I'll, I'll include some links to a few things or whatever that I've talked about today. And um, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a like, subscribe or a share, or if you listen to this on Apple Podcasts to, to write me a review, I'd really appreciate that. So anyway, until next time, have a good one. Mm-hmm.